Let's continue our study of geometry in preparation for our trig uh, by continuing with section 1.2, which is called Angle Relationships and Similar Triangles. So we need some definitions again. So instead of writing out a definition, we're just going to draw pictures so you can see what's going on. So the first definition is vertical angle. Notice vertical is spelled V-E-R-T-I-C-A-L, not C-L-E. So these are vertical angles. So if you have two, two lines that intersect, like this, vertical angles are the, notice we get four angles here uh, determined by the two lines. So vertical angles are the angles that are opposite each other. For example, if I label this angle A and this one B and this one C and this one D, so A and C are vertical angles and B and D are as well. So we have two pairs of vertical angles there. So A and C are vertical angles, B and D are vertical angles. Well, just, just by looking at the picture, what do you think is true about vertical angles A and C and vertical angles B and D? Okay. Well, they're equal to each other. They have equal measures. So notice angle A and C in my picture, they're both acute, less than 90 degrees. And B and D in my picture are both obtuse. So A and D aren't the same, but B and D are. Okay. So as pairs, vertical angles are equal. Again, it's pairs. So I'm not saying all four of them are equal. A and C are equal, B and D are equal. Okay? So that's the first definition. So the next definition is called is uh, transversal. So a line that intersects two parallel lines is called a transversal. Okay? So in this definition, you need parallel lines. Okay? So parallel lines in the plane are two lines that do not intersect. So those lines are parallel. So a transversal is a line that intersects the two parallel lines. So obviously, you can't have a third parallel line because it wouldn't intersect either one. So a transversal would look something like this. So this would be an example of a transversal. Again, think about what the prefix trans means. Trans means across. So this is a line that cuts across a pair of parallel lines. So in high school geometry, you had a slew of theorems which we'll talk about in the next definition. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, Okay, there's a whole slew of theorems about that situation, which is what we're about to get to. Okay, so the only reason we're doing this definition is it's referred to in the next set here. Okay, so I'm not going to write out the definitions of all these. Again, we'll just uh, use a picture. All right, so for the next four definitions, I'm going to use this same picture. So I'll draw it over here. So in your notes, you might want to just draw it like I have all the way, way to the right. So I have two parallel lines. I'm just going to draw them horizontally, even though it doesn't matter. Two parallel lines uh, cut by a transversal. And I'm going to notice we get eight angles here, four here and four here. I'm going to label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Again, I'm going to use this picture for the next four definitions. I'm assuming the two lines I have, two horizontal lines here are parallel. Okay, so the first one is alternate interior angles. So that's the first one. Well, alternate interior, just think about what alternate means and think about what interior means and you could, that'll tell you what angles we're looking at here. So interior angles in this situation means angles inside the parallel lines. Right? So these angles are interior. Alternate means opposite sides of the transversal. So interior or exterior is inside the parallel lines or outside the parallel lines. That's interior, exterior. Alternate is opposite sides of the transversal. So with that in mind, what's a pair in this picture of alternate interior angles? So they're inside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, so could you think of a pair of alternate interior angles? Okay. Well, inside the parallel lines and opposite sides of the transversal, C and F are alternate interior angles and also D and E are alternate interior angles. Okay, so C and F, alternate opposite sides, D and E, alternate opposite sides, and they're all interior. Now what do you think is true about a pair of alternate interior angles? Like C and F, for example. Notice C and F are both acute in my picture, and D and E are both obtuse. So all four of them are not the same, but as pairs, alternate interior angles So C and F are equal, D and E are equal. Okay, the next definition is alternate exterior angles. Okay, 
So using the discussion that I said a, a little while ago, what would a pair of alternate exterior angles be? So outside the parallel line and opposite sides of the transversal. <clears throat> so can you think of a pair of alternate exterior angles uh, in my picture? Well, it looks like exterior is outside and opposite sides of the transversal. So it looks like A and H would be a pair and B and G would be a pair. Now, if you just eyeball the picture, you could come to the conclusion that as pairs, these are equal as well. So alternate exterior angles are equal. But we actually can, if you believe everything we've done before, you can convince yourself that these are equal. Now, why is that? Uh, let's convince ourselves that A and H are in fact equal. Assuming everything we've discussed up to this point, uh, you believe. So let's look at A and H. I'm trying to get A and H to be equal. Well, why are A and D equal? Well, these are two lines that intersect. They're opposite each other. These are vertical angles. So A and D are equal because A and D are vertical angles. Well, why are D and E equal? D and E are equal because they're alternate interior angles. So if you believe that vertical angles are equal and you believe that alternate interior angles are equal, we have A and D and E are all the same. Well, what about E and H? E and H are equal because those are vertical angles. So A is equal to D because they're vertical, D is equal to E because they're alternate interior, and E is equal to H because they're vertical, therefore A and H have to be the same. So if you believe the two facts that we discussed before, then A and H being equal comes from here. Okay. Uh, the next definition is corresponding angles. Next definition is corresponding angles. And this definition makes sense if you think about what the word means. So if we were in person here and I was lecturing to a class, and I have you know Joe Smith sitting to my, you know, the first desk, first row, first column on my right, sitting up front. Suppose we had to move into a classroom next door that looked exactly like ours, and I told everybody in class, sit in the corresponding desk in that classroom. So if we all got up and moved over to the other classroom, where would Joe Smith be sitting? He would be sitting in the first, first row, first column to my right, up front. Okay? He would just sit in the exact same seat. Using that idea of correspondence, corresponding angles, think of this as ABCD as one classroom and EFGH as the other classroom. So person A is sitting you know, top left, so if they move to the other classroom, where are they going to be? Top left. So A and E are a pair of corresponding angles. Right. What's another pair of corresponding angles? If you use the same argument, top right, B is sitting in the top right position. F is in the top right position, so B and F. Uh, likewise, C and G and D and H. So there are four pairs of corresponding angles here. So A and E are corresponding angles, B and F, C and D, D and H. And what's true about corresponding angles? Well, we already went through this, right? A and E are the same, right? And A, D, E, and H were all the same. A and E are the same, D and H are the same. So again, as pairs, corresponding angles are equal. In fact, A, D, E, H, you know, A, D, uh, A, E, D, H, so actually these four are the same, and then these four are the same, but if you just look at them as pairs, A and E are the same, B and F are the same, C and G, D and H, so they're all the same measure. Right? And then the last one here, I don't personally expect you to know the name of this last one because uh, this is the only place I've ever seen it even defined. So this last one's called interior angles, angles on the same side, geez, of the transversal. I mean, goodness gracious, what a terrible, they should just make up a name. Like I said, I've never even seen them called this before. Okay, interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Okay, well, that's exactly what they said. In, remember, interior is inside. So what's a pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal? C and E are a pair of those. And D and F. So they're interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Now, are C and E necessarily the same? In my picture, C is acute, less than 90 degrees. E is obtuse, between 90 and 180 degrees. And so they clearly can't be equal. What's the relationship between them? Well, I, I don't memorize it. I figure it out, right? What's the relationship between C and E? Well, A plus C, right? A plus C 
is 180 degrees in there, right? Those angles are supplementary, right? A plus C makes a straight line. A and C are supplementary, but we know that A and E are the same, right? A and E are the same, they're corresponding angles, so A has the same measure as E, so I can replace A with E here. So notice E plus C is 180 degrees, so E plus C is 180. So, and same for D and F. So what's the relationship? So these angles are supplementary. Their sum is 180. So C plus C e is 180 degrees. D plus F is 180 degrees. Again, I just figured out this way. A plus C is 180, but E is A. So E plus C is 180. B plus D is 180, but B and F are the same. So D and F sum to 180. Okay, again, I don't expect you to know this name. I'm not going to quiz you on that. Okay. Now, I will tell you, though, on a quiz or an exam, I may ask you to either direction. For example, when you take you know, Spanish class and you're studying your note cards and you're looking at the Spanish words on one side and you see casa. I'm like, oh, casa. Oh, that means house. That's easy. You know, blanco, blanca. Oh, that means white. That's easy. And then you turn the cards around and then it says house. And you have to come up with the Spanish word for house. You know, geez, I can't remember. One direction is always easier than the other. So make sure you study these vocabulary words in both directions. For example, I may say, I may on a quiz or a test, give you this picture and say, give me a pair of corresponding angles. You say, oh, A and E. Easy. Okay. But on the other hand, what if I gave you E and H? I said, E and H are what kind of angles? You have to come up with the word. That's a lot harder. So make sure you study in both directions, right? If I tell you, you know, E and H, you ought to be able to tell me they're vertical angles. Right? Or if I say alternate exterior angles, then you ought to be able to give me, say, B and G, for example. Okay? So make sure you study both directions, right? I give you the vocabulary word, you give me a pair of angles. I give you a pair of angles, you give me the vocabulary word. One direction is always easier than the other. Make sure you study them in both directions. So referring back to the, the, you know, the theorems in high school with the transversal, the theorem said if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are equal. That's what we just did. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are equal. That's what we just did. Okay, uh, the next fact says the sum of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. Now you've probably seen this fact before, but did you ever prove why? So let me, let me try to convince you that that's true. So let me just draw an arbitrary triangle here, okay? And I'm gonna put a, a, a single mark here for the measure of that angle, a double mark here for the measure of that angle, and a triple mark here for the measure of that angle. So I wanna convince you that angle one plus angle two plus angle three is 180 degrees. Okay, so let me use my little picture. How do I do that? Okay. So let me add in some lines here. So let me add a horizontal line here that's parallel to this line down here. Okay. So this line and this line are parallel. So ignore this for a second, this picture right here. Notice what I have. I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So I'm not using this line or these two angles at all here. So I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Notice this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles. They're inside the parallel lines and opposite sides of the transversal. And we just saw that alternate interior angles are equal. So this angle right here has the same measure as two. Okay, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are the same. Okay, now let me extend, so I drew that line to be parallel. Let me extend this line here, this line right here, okay? Now ignore this line segment and angles two and three. Ignore those for, ignore all these right here for a second. And now what do I have? Again, I have two parallel lines, the horizontal line, and now imagine this as the transversal. Again, ignore this part right here. So basically I'm looking at this, right? The two parallel lines and this line is this line here. Okay, so this angle here is this angle here. That's, so ignore that, that's the picture I have. Well, we learn corresponding angles are equal. Right, of these four, that's the top right. Of these four, that's the top right. These are corresponding angles, so I know they're equal. So in this picture, this angle here is equal to that angle here. Okay, see this picture is following the same as this one right here. Now notice what I have in my add-on picture here. 
right? Angle one plus angle two plus angle three. Notice one plus two plus three, those three angles make a straight line. Right? So angle one plus angle two plus angle three is 180 degrees. So the theorem works. What you can do, especially if you have kids that use safety scissors, just draw some triangles on a piece of paper. Right? And cut it out, cut it out, cut it out, you know, cut those out, and just sort of put the three angles together. You know, take that angle and that angle and you know that angle, line them up together, and you'll get a straight line. Right? Same thing with those. Cut them out and line them and put them to next to each other, you'll get a straight line. But there is a little proof for you using facts we've already discussed. Okay, as an example of this, oh, before we do that, it, the next example says, what are the sum of the acute angles in a right triangle? So if you have a right triangle, so that angle is 90 degrees, the other two angles are uh, acute. So what is the sum of that angle plus that angle? Well, we just learned that the sum of all three angles in any triangle is 180. So we know this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180. We know that one's already 90. So, so the sum of the two acute angles, the sum of the two acute angles in a right triangle must be 90 degrees. All right? So because that those two together sum up to 90 and then another 90 is 180. Now, I'm not saying that they both have to be 45. They don't have to be equal, they, but they have to sum to 90 degrees. Okay, so, oh, please. Okay, so uh, the last example on this page, number 25, it says the measures of two angles of a triangle are given. So 147 degrees, 12 minutes, and 30 degrees, 19 minutes. It says, find the measure of the third angle. Okay. Well, you know that all three angles, so this angle plus this angle plus the third angle is 180 degrees. So we need to subtract the sum of those two from 180 degrees. So my first calculation, let me add these two together. We know how to do that. The good news here is you don't have to carry. 12 minutes and 19 minutes is only 31 minutes. And 147 degrees and 30 degrees is 177 degrees. Now that's not the answer, right? Right. So that I have this tri some triangle here, and you know the 147 plus the this is not the scale. The 147 plus the 30 is the sum of those two. How do I get the third angle? The third angle is going to be 180 minus that. Okay. So the so the third angle I'm labeling my work here. The third angle is 180 minus 177 degrees 31 minutes. So we just have to do that calculation and that's our answer. So again, you can use the calculator. I already showed you how to do that in the last section. Or you can do what we did before. By Notice here you have to borrow. I'm trying to take 31 minutes from nothing. So what do we do? We borrow a degree from here, making it 179 degrees. That one degree, when you bring it to the minutes column, gives you 60 minutes. When you subtract, you get 2 degrees, 29 minutes. So that's a very tiny angle, which doesn't surprise you. 177 is almost 180, so there's, the difference is very small. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, for the next problem, there's a picture in the text, so you, you want to draw this on your notes. Right, so th this number 13, there's a picture in the book. So this is just a rough sketch of the picture in the book. And this angle is at measure x. This angle is x plus 20 degrees. And this angle is 210 degrees minus 3x. It says find the measure of each marked angle. So all three angles are marked, so they want all three angles for the, for the answer. Okay, well, what fact do they want you to use here? Is that something with the parallel lines and the transversal? Well, no. I mean, we don't have any parallel lines here. This is the fact we just discussed. The sum of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180. So that's the equation we need to solve. So x plus x plus 20. I'm not going to write the degree sign because I'm doing algebra now plus the third angle, 210 minus 3x is 
180. So the sum of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So that plus that plus that is 180. Now it's an algebra problem. This is a linear equation, x to the first, x to the first, x to the first. So we just combine like terms. So I have an x plus an x is 2x minus 3x is minus x. 20 and 210 is 230 is 180. Again, don't do eight things in one step. I did two things here. I combine my x's together and I combine the constants together. Now, how do we solve for x? Put everything with x on one side, everything without on the other. So I need to subtract 230 from both sides. All right, 180 minus 230 is negative 50. Multiply both sides by a negative one. You get x is 50 now degrees. Put your units at the end for sure. Now, that doesn't answer the question. The question said find the measure of each marked angle. We only found one of them, this one. So label your work, please. X plus 20 degrees, 50 and 20, that's 70 degrees. And then 210 degrees minus 3x. Well, 3 times x, uh, 3 times 50 is 150. 210 minus 150 is 60. Now, notice I plug in 50 for x in each of these to, and figure out the answer. Now, see if your answer makes sense. All three have to add up to 180. 50 and 70 is 120 plus 60 is 180. Notice, I didn't find those two and then subtract those from 180, because if I'd made a mistake, I wouldn't have taught it that way, right? So I plugged 50 in here, 50 in here, 50 in here, got my three answers, then I made sure they added up to 380, because if I'd made a mistake here, I would have, I would have taught it. Okay, so that, that's that one. Uh, the next problem is number 21. Find the measure each marked angle lines M and N are parallel. Okay, so they have this line M, and then they have a line N, and they tell me that those are parallel, and then they have this line coming through it. There's your transversal, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and they give you the measure of the angles here. This angle here is X plus one degrees, and the angle here is 4X minus 56 degrees. Okay. So again, that picture is in the book. I didn't put it in the notes. You can just copy it down or look in the book. Okay, so this angle here is measure x plus 1 degrees. This angle here is measure 4x minus 56. Now, what fact do they want you to use here? Notice these are interior angles on the same side of the transversal. So we're just going back to that property we talked about a little while ago. And what do we know about interior angles on the same side of the transversal? Uh, they're supplementary. Again, if you, if you don't remember that, think of it this way, right? This angle here and this angle here are the same because they're corresponding, so that's also 4x minus 56. Those two, right, this angle and this angle are the same because they're corresponding, and these two angles make up a straight line. So again, if you don't memorize that fact, you can figure it out. So 4x minus 56 plus x plus 1 is 180. Oops, uh, I'm, not, I'm solving an equation. I don't need to do these things. Right? So this angle plus this angle are 180. Now we just solve, combine like terms, 4x and x is 5x. Negative 56 plus 1 is negative 55. Right, we're just solving a linear equation, combine like terms. I want all the x's on one side and everything else on the other, so I'm going to add 55 to both sides. That's 235. All right, add 55 to both sides. And then divide both sides by 5. So 235 is evenly divisible by 5. And what is that, 47? Mm -hmm. Okay, now be careful. The problem did not say solve for x. That's not the end of the problem. It said find the measure of each marked angle. So we have to plug back in. So this angle here, what's x plus 1? Well, that's 48, clearly. And then what's 4x? 4x minus 56 degrees. Again, I will do the plugging in. 4 times 47 minus 56 is 132 degrees. Now we know the ang those angles have to be supplementary. So now check, do they add up to 180? They do. Again, don't find the 48 and subtract from 180 to get that answer. Because if you made a mistake, you won't catch yourself. But that's that problem. That's just using the facts we did before. Okay, so the next section here. is talking about different types of triangles. Now, we did types of angles already. Remember, we did right angle, straight angle, acute angle, obtuse angle. And now we're going to classify triangles. Now, we're going to classify two different ways. So the first way is by angles. So we have Q 
acute, uh, we have right, and we have obtuse. Right? So I'm classifying here triangles. This is by angles. And then another way we're going to do it is classify it by size. Okay? And so we have equilateral, and we have isosceles, and then we have scalene. So if we're talking about angles, a triangle is one of these three types. If we're talking about size, a triangle is one of these three, ty three types. We're going to do examples where we mix and match in a, in a little bit. Okay, so again, we're talking about triangles here. Well, so what's an acute triangle? That means all angles are acute. All angles are acute. Now let me see if, we can, if I can draw a picture of that. Whenever I try to draw a picture of these, my mind always wants to do symmetry so they don't always look the way they should. Uh, so, something like that. Notice all three angles in my triangle are less than 90 degrees, so all the angles are acute. Now, what's the definition of a right triangle? Remember, this is an acute triangle, a right here, an acute triangle, a right triangle, a two triangle, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, scaling triangle. Now, these are all words that describe the triangles. Now, what's a right triangle? Exactly one right angle. Now, why can't a triangle have two right angles? I always have students say, well, if you try to draw, with, you can't get it to draw. What's a good mathematical explanation that a triangle couldn't have two right angles? Well, think about the fact we had before. The sum of the three angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. So if you had a triangle with two right angles, you'd have a 90 degree angle and another 90 degree angle, right? That's 180 degrees right there, which means the third angle would be zero degrees, which makes no sense, okay? So there's a good mathematical argument that a triangle can't have more than one right angle. And what's a right triangle? We've already drawn some of those. There's a picture of a right triangle. There's my 90 degree angle. Now, what's the definition of an obtuse triangle? That's a triangle with exactly one obtuse angle. Same argument as before. Why can't a triangle have two obtuse angles? Well, if you have an angle bigger than between 90 and 180 and another one between 90 and 180, the sum of that's already more than 180. Okay, and what's a picture of that, say, something like that. So there's the obtuse angle. So this is a, an acute triangle, a right triangle, an obtuse triangle. Okay, now let's classify by sides. What's an equilateral triangle? All three sides are equal. Right? Notice equal, E-Q-U-A-L, this, this is I-L, equilateral. All three sides are the same. It's basically that triangle I drew up there. Uh, all three sides are the same length. So all three sides are the same length. All right, an isosceles triangle is two sides have the same length. Now, I think it may depend upon who, whom you ask or the book. Uh, some people say, you know, an isosceles triangle has exactly two sides. Or, and so, I saw, you know, you can say, you know, an equilateral triangle does have two sides. So an equilateral triangle is an isosceles. But some people, when they say equilateral, they say, well, we mean all three, but not two. Or, uh, I'm not really, I don't really care. Uh, if I really want to be particular, you know, and stick to the precise definitions where that's three and that's two, but it could have three. Uh, I'm just gonna say, you know, I would say, give me an example of an isosceles triangle that's not equilateral, and then there's no confusion. I want exactly two sides, okay? So, yeah, I'll, if I really want one that's not the other, I'll be, I'll be particular. An isosceles that's not equilateral, I'll specifically say that. Okay, so an isosceles triangle, well, what would that look like? So this side and this side could have the same length and then that much shorter. So those two are the same. Okay, now what about a scalene triangle? So no two sides have the same length. Okay, so that all three sides are different. That's what that's saying. Now, I am, again, my eyes want to do symmetry. Uh, I don't know if I can draw a scalene triangle. No, see, that looks like isosceles. That looks like isosceles. Well, you get the idea. Here, I'll do a right triangle. Yeah, 
clearing. So that side one, that side two, that side three. Okay, those are different. There's a scheme in general. Okay, now let me go back to uh, a, a fact that we'll be using in the course, which I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, notice in an equilateral triangle, all three sides are equal. There's a fact in, in, in a triangle that largest sides are opposite largest angles, smallest sides are opposite smallest angles. So if you have an equilateral triangle, all three sides are the same, so all the angles opposite those have to be the same. So in an equilateral triangle, all three angles have to be the same. In other words, the triangle we would say is equiangular. So that's a classification by angles, right? We could have put equi equiangular and, and said all three angles are the same. So in every equilateral triangle is equiangular, every equiangular angular triangle is equilateral. So they're, they're saying the same, it's the same triangle. So usually people just say equilateral. Okay. So, but every equilateral triangle is equiangular and, and vice versa. Okay. So what would have to be true in an isosceles triangle? If these two sides are the same, the angles opposite would have to be the same. So these two angles would have to be the same. Okay. In a right triangle, notice the largest side we know is a hypotenuse. So this angle has to be the largest angle, 90 degrees, which it is. Okay, so where's the smallest angle in this triangle? That's the shortest side, so the side opposite's the smallest angle. Okay. okay, so the next example here, we're almost done. There's only one more idea after this. It says, determine whether each of the following triangles is possible or impossible. If possible, draw a sketch of such a triangle. Okay. So you have the definitions in your notes. So we're mixing and matching uh, classification by sides and by angles. So we want to mix and match these. My clipboard is getting very dirty. So the first definition says, can you have an isosceles right triangle? Is that possible? Well, let's think about what this is saying. So right triangle, you have to have an angle that has exactly 90 degrees. You have to have a right angle in the triangle. And isosceles means two of the sides have to be equal. Is that possible? Can you have a right triangle where two sides are, have the same length? Well, the hypotenuse and a leg in a right triangle cannot have the same length. Hypotenuse is always the largest side, which means the legs have to be the same. Remember, the, in a right triangle, the other two, the, the non-hypotenuse sides are called the legs. So, sure, you can do that. So just make the leg here and the leg there have the same length. And then the hypotenuse will have whatever, it'll be more. So yes, that's possible. So it's a right triangle with two sides the same. You can't have the hypotenuse and the leg be the same side. So the two legs have to be the same. That's possible. What about an isosceles obtuse triangle? Is that possible? So think about what this means. You have to have a triangle with an obtuse angle, bigger than 90 degrees, less than 180 degrees, and two sides being the same. Is that possible? Well, it's the same sort of argument we did there. In an obtuse triangle, the side opposite the obtuse angle has to be the largest side, because it's opposite the largest angle, which means the other two sides have to be the same. Just take this triangle and make that angle a little bit bigger. So there's uh, one side, and there's another side. I'm trying to make them the same length. Now, I'm not calling these legs. Legs are specifically used for the short sides in a right triangle. These are not legs. And there's my obtuse angle. It's more than 90 degrees, less than 180. So this is an isosceles obtuse triangle. Okay. The next one says equilateral, an equilateral right triangle. So is this possible? So we need a right triangle, a triangle with a 90 degree angle, where all three sides are the same. Is that possible or impossible? Well, we just mentioned that a right triangle, the hypotenuse has to be bigger than the two legs, which means we can't have equilateral. This is impossible. We can't do that. Okay. And the last one here is scalene acute triangle. All right, so what does this mean? Acute means all three angles are acute. Scalene means all three sides have different lengths. Is that possible? Sure. Now, can I draw one as the question? Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Right, I'm making it look like a right angle. I, I, that's nine, that's uh, uh, 91 degrees. <laughs> okay. 
So uh, I'm saying, no, sorry, acute. That's 89 degrees. Here, let me, let me change it just slightly so it'll be a little more obvious. There we go. There we go. So that's less than 90, that's less than 90, that's less than 90, so it's an acute triangle, and all three sides have different lengths. And those are hard to draw, because your mind wants to do a symmetry. Okay. So the last idea in this section is on similar triangles. So we have to discuss what that means, and then we'll do an example. Okay, so uh, the definition here is sort of hand wavy. Similar triangles have exactly the same shape, but are not necessarily the same size. Uh, for example, let me draw an equilateral triangle. That's equilateral. Notice each of the angles would have to be 60 degrees, wouldn't it? Because in an equilateral triangle, all three angles are the same. And the sum of all three angles is 180, so each one would have to be 60. There's an equilateral triangle. Let me draw a larger equilateral triangle. So again, that's 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees. But these sides are all the same, but they're larger than that one. So when they say they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size, these are similar triangles. Right? In particular, a, a, a good definition of similar triangles are two triangles are similar, if, all, if the angles in one triangle match the angles in the second triangle, okay? That's, uh, instead of saying they have the same shape, okay? So similar triangles, the three angles, in, I'm not saying all three have to be equal. The three angles in this triangle are the same as the three angles in that triangle. So again, I'm drawing pictures of where it says examples. Let me draw another one for, to show you. So suppose I have this triangle, a right triangle here, and say this angle, again, this is not to scale. Suppose this angle is 21 degrees. Now what if I draw a larger triangle, like that, and I say this angle here is 21, again this is not to scale, and that one's 21 degrees. Clearly those are not 21 degrees. So do these have the same shape, even though they're not the same size? All right, again, use with the fact that just similar tri triangles are similar, two triangles are similar to one another, if, they, if all three angles are one or all three angles are the other. Notice we have a 90 degrees and a 21 here, we have a 90 degrees and a 21 here, this angle here and this angle here have to be the same because all three add up to 180. Or the acute angles add up to 90 when they break. So this is going to have to be, what, uh, 68 degrees? Uh, sorry, 69 degrees, and that's 61 degrees. So these, so these two triangles are similar, and these two triangles are similar. Okay, so that's the best way to do it. Argue the three angles of this triangle or the three angles of that one. Those the sides don't have to be the same, just the angles. Okay. Congruent triangles are the same, same shape and same size. In other words, they're the exact same track. Same, all three angles are the same, and all three sides have the same length. Okay. So what's a picture of congruent triangles? Uh, I, know. I mean, they have to be exactly the same. Okay. So all three angles are the same, all three sides are the same. So that side and that side, that side and that side. Right. So congruent triangles match. Now, they, you could actually... They don't have to be in the same um, uh, orientation, they, right? You could, I could, you know, rotate that one around a little bit like this, right? So that side is that side, that side is that side, that side is that side. So these are congruent triangles, they're supposed to be, right? All three angles and all three sides are the same. They don't necessarily have to be parallel or anything like that, okay? So those congruent triangles are similar but similar triangles are not necessarily congruent. These are not congruent. They have the same angles, but not the same size, right? This side's shorter than that side. These are similar, but they're not congruent because the hypotenuse here is a lot longer than the hypotenuse here, okay? Okay, now what's a fact about similar triangles? That's where we're headed. So if you have similar triangles, Ratios of sides are in proportion to one another, right? So let me draw a picture to show you what I mean. So I, I'm just drawing a right triangle. But they don't have to be right triangles. Suppose I had a triangle that looked like this, and there's A, and there's B, and there's C. And then suppose I had another triangle that was bigger, but it's similar. Okay, I'm assuming these are similar triangles, right? So these are similar. And I label this E uh, and D. 
So A, B, C, and D. So I'm saying these triangles are similar, and uh, so, so this angle and this angle are the same, and this angle and this angle are the same. Again, I kind of sort of drew them as, you know, in the same orientation. I mean, this one could be flipped or rotated or something like that. So the key is, in, in working with similar triangles, is figure out what angle is equal to what angle in the other one. This angle is equal to that. So the side opposite, so side E here corresponds to side B because they're both opposite that. Side D and side A are corresponding sides because they're both opposite the double. And C and F are the same, they're corresponding sides because they're both opposite the right angle, okay? So that's the way to do it. Because sometimes you'll have a problem that looks, you know, they'll give you one like this, and then you know one like that, and you have to figure out what goes with what, right? So the right angle here and the right angle here, the side opposite the right angle is corresponding to the side opposite. Okay, that's the way you do it. That's it. Figure out what angle goes with what, the side opposites then are matched. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> what you can do is when you take a ratio of sides in one triangle, it's equal to the same ratio over here. So for example, if I write A over B, I took this side divided by that side. That's gonna equal that corresponding, the ratio of the corresponding sides over here. So side A is corresponding to D, B is corresponding to E. So A over B, that length divided by that length, is the same as that length D divided by that length E. Okay. Or what's another possibility? Suppose I did C over B. So the hypotenuse here divided by the side opposite the singleton, right, the one angle. C over B, well, what's that going to be equal to? Well, C corresponds to side F, and B corresponds to side E. And other combinations as well. So you can pick two sides here and divide them. Pick the corresponding two sides over here and divide them. Those ratios will be the same. So A over B is B over E. C over B is F over E, okay? Or, instead of taking two sides here and two sides here, you can pick a side here and a side here and a side here and a side here, right? But just make sure they're corresponding. So for example, I could do B over E, right? And that's the same as A over D, okay? So notice what I've done, I pick this side here and I've divided it by the corresponding side over B over E is A over D which would be C over A, F, okay? So in this example, I'm picking two sides in this triangle and then the two sides in that triangle. Or you can do a side here over the corresponding side there is a side here over the corresponding side here. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you do it. Now, why does it work both ways? <coughs> uh, notice if you cross multiply here, you get BD is AE, right? BD is AE. Notice if you cross multiply here, what do you get? B, D is A, E, right? So if this is true, this is true, which means that's true. So they're all saying the same thing, okay? So you can either pick two sides here and two sides here, or one and one and one and one, okay? It doesn't matter. Okay, our last example in the section is an application of this. <coughs> and the problem says, uh, number 60, a forest fire lookout tower, mm. Uh, cast a shadow 180 feet long. Okay, let me just stop there. They usually, in math, they tell you read the whole problem before you start. I never do that because it, it, it gets to be too much information. A forest fire lookout tower casts a shadow 180 feet long. Okay, so here's my lookout tower. So there's my lookout tower. <laughs> right up here. So there's my lookout tower. Okay, so let's pretend the sun is out here. As, as you can tell, I, have, I, I, I probably have a degree in art. So the sun is shining, and so the shadow is going to be down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure it from the middle, though. Okay, so there's the shadow, and the shadow is 180 feet long. Make a triangle out of it, okay? Okay, so there's my lookout tower, and the shadow is 180 feet long. Measured from here, right? From here. Okay? At the same time, the shadow of a nine-foot truck is 15 feet long. Okay, okay, hmm. <laughs> okay, so here's my truck. We'll keep it basic, there's my truck. Now when they say a nine, you, normally when you say a nine-foot truck, you're talking about the length, but they're not here. When they say it, they mean nine feet high, right? So the truck here, the truck here is nine feet high. That's what they mean. 
and that cast a shadow. The shadow of a nine foot truck is 15 feet long. So the, the shadow here is uh, 15 feet long. I suppose really I should be doing this. It's terrible. Right, the sun is shining, the shadow is gonna be from here to here, right? So this is the nine foot truck high, the shadow 15 feet tall. <clears throat> I mean, I really could have just made this simple by putting all the single poles down, right? Even though it wouldn't be, so it's held up by a single pole. Just to make it actually look like a triangle. And we're assuming they're ver both vertical, that they're not slanted. We're not, uh, we're not talking about a house in New Orleans, so they're, we're assuming they're vertical. Okay. Find the height of the tower. Let me just call it something. I'll just call that X. Okay. Now, I have two right triangles here. And you may think, well, we have, we're talking about two sides and two sides, so it must be the similar triangles. But be careful. Nowhere in the problem did it say that these triangles were similar. They didn't tell you that. Now you have to convince yourself that these will be similar triangles. Now why is that? Why would these triangles have to be similar? I'm assuming they're both right angles here, but why would, say, this angle have to be that angle and that angle have to be that angle? Right? Nowhere does it say that the, the triangles are similar. Well, the key here is they're using shadows. Now, we're assuming these are near each other, right? This isn't in New York City and this is in London, okay? We're assuming they're near each other. So, what, how's the shadow being cast, right? The sun, the rays are coming down and shining, and then, you know, the pole is blocking and making a shadow. Same thing with the truck. The truck is blocking the sun, coming, the rays coming down, so we have shadow. So, the key here is the angle that the rays are coming down on, on that object are the same as the angle coming down on that one. So because of that, you know, the angle here and the angle here are going to be the same. Okay, that's what you have to realize with these shadow problems, is, is that the angle of the rays coming down on the object are the same because they're nearby. Okay. Technically, if they're nearby, they will be a little bit different, but they're so close, you know, we're assuming that the angles are the same. So nowhere in the problem does it say that the triangles are similar, but because it's a shadow problem and the objects are near each other, the angle here and the angle here are going to be the same, which means those two angles are the same as well. Okay, so there's a little bit of inference here. These are similar triangles. Okay, well, we just set up our ratio. I'm just, I like to use the angles in the same triangle, so I'm going to say x over 180 is equal to, now that side's corresponding to this one, 9 over 15. Right, so that over that is that over. If you wanted to, you could have said x over 9 is 180 over 15, right? Set it up that way, it doesn't matter. So we just have to solve for x. Now normally I'll ask a class, how do we solve for x? And somebody will say, cross multiply. Because whenever you have two fractions equal, you always want to cross multiply. Well, that's perfectly fine, but you're doing it in two steps. You're trying to get x by itself. So what do you do to get rid, you want to get rid of the 180? Multiply both sides by 180 and you solve for x. So if you cross multiply, you'll have to do two steps. In this method, you only have to do one, right? To get rid of the 180, multiply both sides by 180, and so it looks like x is, I don't know why I'm typing this in, but fine, 9 over 15, is 108, and it's the same units as they gave you. So the tower is 108 feet long. All right, so if a problem doesn't say the triangles you get are similar, you have to convince yourself the three angles in one triangle will be the three in the other. Okay, that was the last example in that section.